Hi, this is Dr. Paul White, uh, co-author of The Five Languages of Appreciation in the Workplace, and I'm pleased to be joined here with uh, Jasmine Liu, who is visiting from Singapore, and Jasmine is one of our premier partners that provides an appreciation work training in Singapore and Malaysia, and um, we've had the opportunity recently to uh, do some research together um, comparing how employees in the U.S. and employees in Singapore differ in uh, their preferences for uh, the five languages. And in fact, that's gonna be uh, published here pretty quickly. So um, just to provide some context and a reminder that you know, in, in the US uh, that uh, words of affirmation is the, the most frequently chosen appreciation language. 46% uh, mm -hmm. of the workforce choose that, so it's pretty high. Um, quality time mm -hmm. tends to be second, about 26%. Acts of service is 22 um, tangible gifts is quite a bit lower, down to 6%, and physical touch is less than 1%. But um, we were cued by uh, sort of an article that came out in uh, Singapore that people, uh, employees, really wanted some help from their supervisors. And so we wound up pulling data and comparing the two groups because we have about a thousand people in Singapore that have taken the inventory and um, found that uh, a different language is, was preferred for them. So, Jasmine, tell us about that. Yes. So actually, interestingly, when I conduct several runs of the program, Five Languages of Appreciation in the Workplace, the Singaporean group tends to give the majority prefer acts of service. Why is that so? Because perhaps they're very practical people, being effective and efficient, we want to get things done fast and right. So we prefer our leaders to actually don't give lip service. It's not about just praise or encouragement, but sit down and understand my problems and also uh, help me to overcome the obstacles. Mm. It's not just saying I will help you and thank you for the job, but really experience how I felt and the kind of difficulties I faced. But another key thing is I also introduce, I also ask the leaders, have you done that? They say yes. But on the other downside, because it's not done effectively, it's when leaders are trying to listen and help the employees. It becomes a scolding session mm. where they start to be very critical, like, why are you not doing this? Why are you making these mistakes? Or even they could also say that uh, what they're doing is not right. Mm. So although in the leader's mindset, they think that I'm helping my employees, there's nothing wrong with their intention, but the way they do it in their tones, in their body language and also being critical does not seem as helping but rather judging and blaming mm. yeah so i think this is a key crux that leaders have to understand you know i myself faced that before i have a leader who has very good intention uh, and she would spend two three hours with us in a meeting to go through slide by slide word by word and to her, she felt that she's, she's doing something for us to actually invest three hours, dedicate her time and putting her work aside to really sit down and go through the, the slides with us. But the other flip side was the, the approach was done very differently, like her tone was very harsh, it comes a scolding and judging session, gaming mm -hmm. session. And the outcome is all of us in that three hours meeting don't seem to have uh, viewed any acts of service <laughs> from her, but rather we hope that the meeting ends early and we can and we actually avoid going for meetings with her. Mm. Yeah. So I think that is key that uh, acts of service is first, number one, you really have to sit down, understand and experience how they feel. Number two, um, besides understanding is to identify their obstacles and as leaders, you are empowered to do so. You have to uh, help them to overcome the obstacles. And if you're very grateful, it can be simple things like helping them with work processes, uh, streamline their work processes, or even provide resources like proper tools, equipment, and computers to help them to do their job effectively and efficiently. Yeah, yeah. so I mean, it is obviously true that uh, whether you're a supervisor or a colleague, how you provide an act of service can really make a difference in how it's both delivered and how it's received. And uh, we want to do it in an encouraging way, not in a uh, sort of condescending way. So it's helpful to, to hear that context, and mm -hmm. thanks for sharing. Okay.